effort. The current Treasury Secretary and his predecessor face a House hearing today on the bailout of American International Group. Secretary Timothy Geithner will likely face tough questions about his ties to the Wall Street banks he helped save, including claims he worked with the New York Fed to hide AIG bailout information. With me now is University of Maryland law professor Michael Greenberger. Professor, good to have good you to see here you. with us. These hearings couldn't come, it seems, as the worst time for the Fed chairman because there are likely questions about his role in the AIG bailout and his attempts to rescue them. Yes, that's true. Uh, however, the main focus is, I think, going to be on Secretary Paulson, who at the critical time was president of the New York Fed. And the issue essentially is, uh, as people recall, on September 15, 2008, Lehman Brothers was allowed to fail. On September 16, 2008, out of the clear blue, the Bush administration takes a turn. Uh, Paulson is Secretary of the Treasury. Geithner is President of the New York Fed. AIG is saved. Mm -hmm. At a critical meeting, the president of Goldman Sachs is the only CEO in a governmental meeting deciding whether AIG ought to be saved. Uh, AIG is saved, and later, taxpayer funds are funneled into AIG. The money really isn't for AIG, it's for groups that AIG entered into business with, Goldman Sachs and Societe Generale being the two top ones. There's $27 billion involved. The critical issue is, while the value of the investments had declined dramatically, the New York Fed, with the support of Bernanke and the support of Treasury Paul, uh, Paulson said, we're going to pay 100 cents mm -hmm. on the dollar. Now, at that point, uh, Americans own 80% of AIG. Wow. Yes. They ultimately throw in 180 billion, and nobody seems to be, or the contention is, bargaining on behalf of the American taxpayer. Goldman, Society General, and 11 other banks walk away with billions of dollars. The argument is they should have gotten a lot less. The problem also is that there seems to be an attempt to hide the fact mm -hmm. that this money was paid the amounts that were paid and to who they were paid, keeping them from federal regulators and the American public. You mentioned Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke. He did have a role in this, and that's caused a lot of people, liberal Democrats and some conservative Republicans, to come out and say they're not going to vote for him. Barbara Boxer and, and John McCain on the same side. It's never happened uh, before. How likely will it happen now that he won't be reconfirmed? The betting is, I think it's a good thing that the vote is probably coming up on the Senate floor tomorrow. If anything happens today, there won't be time to digest it. But both very conservative senators and very progressive senators are joined in believing that Bernanke was irresponsible going into the meltdown. The argument is he landed the plane well after the meltdown. The hearing today puts that in dispute. He probably will just squeeze by. The, uh, what would you want to hear from the uh, president tonight in the State of the Union about the state of the economy and job creation? What I want to hear is create jobs, create jobs, create jobs. I think the message came back to the president through the Massachusetts election, the surprise victory of Scott Brown, the Republican. The American people are in fear. Mm -hmm. They don't have jobs. They're worried about losing jobs. Inflation is starting to take its impact. Everything else is secondary to the American public feeling secure with their jobs. Professor Greenberger, thank you very much for being with me. You're welcome.